You got it. Yeah, that's good. You've got this. You've got this. Run faster! And what makes this event a little bit different from traditional last man's is that our loop starts every 20 minutes and it's only a one mile <laughs> course. I'm Aaron Patrick, I'm 33. I'm originally from Grimsby, England, um, but now I reside in Elkhart, Indiana um, with my wife and two awesome kids. So I'm about to partake in my first ultra marathon race or ultra race. Um, the distance is unknown, so I can't really claim a distance or a time, um, but I just decided to do something different, get out of my comfort zone, um, and I'm always up for a challenge, so decided to um, embark on this last man standing event here in Tennessee. Yeah, so with it being an unknown event, uh, an unknown distance, um, everyone's calling it an ultra, but if I conk out in 10 miles, I don't believe that is an ultra. To me, minimum, you need to put 50K in. So the way I'm looking at it, the way I'm talking about you know, my race plan and things like that is, it's not an ultra marathon until I make it one, meaning I need to get through at least 50K. Once I've done 50K, then I'm classified as an ultra marathon. Um, and then it becomes, can we get 50 miles? And then it becomes, all right, who's left? Now, how do we compete? Um, and I'm most looking forward to getting to the point where I can look around and say, who's left, let's compete. Because that's when the true me comes out and that's when I'm at my best. And I know that guy's gonna come out even though I have no idea what I'm doing and I've already heard the race directors have already said, man, you're not ready um, because you can't be from Indiana and all that does is fuel me. My wife looked at me and smirked and she said, they don't know. So I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel pretty confident that I'm going to figure out as, as I go and I'm pretty stubborn um, and I'm determined to make it an ultra. Once it becomes an ultra, that's my mini little checklist taken care of that I wanted to run an ultra and now it's time to compete and I'll be ready to roll. all of you being here. This went from something very small, a small idea, to what we have in front of us. You have to be in the corral to start your loop. If you are next to the corral, when the loop starts, the 20 minute timer dings, you're out. Once the loop starts, you cannot take any aid at all. You can't toss anything to your crew. If you are seen tossing anything, you're out. What you start this loop with is what you gotta carry. The entire time. If you think you probably shouldn't do it, you probably shouldn't. Fair enough. <laughs> Y'all are going to be miserable. What mile is this? I don't know. Is that 11 or 12? Get to the crowd! Someone tie those. Let's go, Patty. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I made it an ultra. 
How do you feel? Pretty good about that. We're working? Yep, we're working. Stay out of your head, man. Yep. Freaking despise your flesh for its weakness and freaking crush it, son. Yep. That's where my head is. You're doing awesome, man. Appreciate it. He came in right at two minutes last time, right? Yep. There's Chad. I'm not with him. You see him? That's what we start. <laughs> My legs don't work. Oh, someone's got to grab me a beer, boys. What kind? Something cold. Right toes. Oh, left groin. for this race are, are kind of you know along the lines of any other last man standing they have to complete the loop within the given time frame our given time frame is 20 minutes which is shorter than a typical last man standing they have to be in the starting corral at the start of the whistle mm -hmm. and they have to leave the corral so if they finish their loop in 20 minutes and 20 seconds they can't go on and do the next loop they time out at that point no matter how much you do it, there's just, there's always some, there's a new wall, there's a new challenge, there's a new type, like this whole thing is a different type of race. Like, can you do a last man saying that's 340 feet of elevation gain in one mile? Every 20 minutes. Every, like, <laughs> like it's just, you know, I love ultra running, I love being in the woods, I love the challenges, I love being by myself and just the community and the feel. It's just always an adventure. It's a challenge every time. Mm -hmm. No race is the same, no mile is the same, nothing. Nothing replays in the same old redundant thing. And I think out here watching people come through every loop, mm -hmm. it's like someone who looks strong on one, the next one, it's like, oh, you're questioning your life choices. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, how, how far did I go? <laughs> you see it? <laughs> dude, that's been, dude, that's been six miles of feeling that and just kept going. Great job. Hey, it did an ultra. Yeah, you did. Hey, dude. Welcome to the club. Sweet, thanks. It's an odd club to be a part of. <laughs> you did an ultra the hardest way. You could. Yeah, this you was not a good one. Thanks. Okay, Thanks. Soccer good job. Learned a lesson. They better than <laughs> ever tell me they're tired on the pitch. Because <laughs> I'll just laugh. <laughs> genuinely, the, the whole time, it was genuinely fun. Good. That's the point. It was just... Yeah. <laughs> we don't want it to be miserable until it's miserable. Right. Yeah. I appreciate it. So glad you heard about it and you know chose this. It's like oh, such an accomplishment. Being from England, I'm definitely I'm not the typical Englishman. I'm definitely willing to get out of my comfort zone. And in England, we we typically live working throughout the week so that we can buy some nice jeans and a nice shirt for the weekend, go out and have a few beers, play some soccer on the weekend, and then we start again. And it's just rinse and repeat. So this this is so far removed from what I grew up and experienced. Um, and I'm so excited to just to be in a place where I can compete against guys that, that grew up with such a different mindset that maybe grew up out in the country, more rural, they're used to this type of stuff. It's important to me knowing that ultimately um, I genuinely feel like I can do whatever I set my mind to and as long as I'm doing it for a purpose bigger than myself. I genuinely want my, my kids to see me work hard. I want these guys who, who, who I coach to see me work hard because I demand that of them. 
Um, and I also want my kids to see me work hard. I want my little boy to, to know that it doesn't matter how talented you are, as much as you are willing to put in the work. And I feel like the success I've had in my life, I used to believe it was because of my talent, but now looking back, I know that it was all because I was willing to just put my nose down, grind it out, and I was more willing to suffer than everybody else around me. And then what little bit of talent I did have helped push me over the edge. Um, but it has taken till now, 33 years old, to realize that. So.